Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Nick Coleman. Just by way of background, uh, I'm the global cloud security leader of IBM uh, all around the globe. Prior to doing this job, uh, I was the government, UK government reviewer of security in Whitehall. Um, and uh, some of you may know that I have a security background. So I'm really going to talk about the context of security and then applying it to cloud. Um, the Coleman report, which I wrote, as, as some of you may know, was published by the Cabinet Office and, and, and is that. So I'm going to sort of draw on those experiences of the public and private sector, but really talk about what does cloud security really mean and where are we. So in terms of what I'm going to get through in the next 30 minutes, really I'm going to talk about the landscape of security. Just a few moments to set the scene for us about how do I look at security, what's happening to security overall, and then talk about applying that into cloud, what does that really look like? How do we really start thinking about security in the cloud? Uh, and really, what are the questions to consider? And then just a bit on where is it evolving? Where do I see this thing, uh, the, the landscape emerging to, and what will we need to do next? So to start with, really, um, you know, the security piece, I think if you look at uh, pretty much every survey, cloud security is, is one of the top um, issues which is raised about businesses uh, adopting the cloud and wanting to have confidence in this. In fact, cloud security, as I th sort of refer to here, has been an issue for, for businesses, be it in cloud, be it in traditional environments. So security as is an issue um, it is around anyway, and what really I'm going to be talking about is how that applies to cloud. So why is security a top issue? Where is it emerging? Um, so there are a couple of things I would say here. One is uh, uh, the internal enabled uh, um, threat or, or, or issue that you might have um, in an environment where you're going to have economic challenges. Usually you see fraud numbers generally rise anyway. So we're looking for potentially environments where we're conscious that users May, may be doing things. We're also seeing users doing much more uh, mobile smart communication. So really from an internal perspective, looking at those dimensions. We've also seen, uh, and many of you will be aware, cyber security as a term is used a lot. There was a summit in London a couple of weeks ago uh, that was convened by William Haig, the Foreign Secretary. Uh, so this is on, you know, and, and they are looking very much at security at, at government level, at international level, which is also leading a number of regulatory bodies to also look at security generally, but also in the context of the cloud. The third bit, and I think I touched on this really, is the mobile piece. Just out of curiosity, how many of you have a smartphone? I think we'll probably get most people, excellent. Uh, I'm probably in the right place then. But I mean, you know, uh, broadly across the community, you know, we're seeing more. I probably should ask the question about tablets, but I, I won't do that yet. I'll do that a little later. Um, we're all seeing that rise, and also that means more information in different places. We'll get to smart meters as well. Those are rolling out in other countries. It's going to come into, into, into these environments soon. So, you know, we're seeing a lot more of this infrastructure, a lot more mobility, but a lot more communication and pervasiveness. So security at a landscape is evolving in terms of this. And then we're seeing a lot of innovation, and in the context of today, I'm obviously going to talk about cloud security. Backing this up, let me just take you through some statistics for a second. So this is uh, from my X-Force team, who run the global intelligence operation for IBM. Uh, and this just shows you uh, that 2010 uh, was a record setting 27% increase over 2009. So if you look at the general vulnerability landscape of what's identified, then if I just also come this way, you see, see the graphic, but also just focus here for a moment if you would this, uh, the, the purple, uh, the, 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 the color piece, the, this is the medium and, and this is the, the high piece. The piece to really just pull out here 
is the vulnerabilities are also medium-high vulnerabilities. So it's not when we're finding them across the landscape, what we're seeing is a pattern where you're getting more sophisticated attack patterns and more, uh, uh, more, more groups involved. How does that apply to the cloud? And now I'm going to start pulling this back into the cloud context and really talk about cloud security and focus on what does it mean to cloud and how do we build security off that? So uh, a couple of things that I would highlight for you. Web application vulnerabilities now account for approximately 50% of all vulnerabilities. So as we talk about cloud environments and web applications into those environments and how to secure them, we're taking these factors into account. We're taking the web apps. We're talking also, as I talked about, the mobile devices, the mobile operating system vulnerabilities is going up. But then on the right-hand side, just wanted to highlight the virtualization piece in the cloud environment. We also understand how that breaks down into the, the vulnerabilities in the environment that you're managing through to cloud. So what I would say is, just in summary at this stage, security is continuing to evolve. There's increased devices, there's increased cloud, there's a number of things there, and we're managing it in the context of a threat landscape which is, which is growing and becoming more sophisticated. So then how do we actually do it in practice? How do we make sure that we're building security and doing it? So really three phases that we do and, uh, and really talk about for, for sharing with you today. So if you look at the left-hand column, this is about secure by design, putting it into the infrastructure build and getting security into those environments at the, at the design concept phase. The second column, the middle piece, is about coming to deploy this and the additional security services you put in to those environments to, to enable security in the run environment. And then in the consume phase, you're talking about operational security. You're talking about having those security mechanisms responding and telling you where you are and how, you, how you're managing it. So into the design with, the, uh, with the, the, uh, the security by design, into the deployment phase, applying the appropriate security for the cloud environment that you're running and looking to run. And then in terms of consuming, actually really understanding what it is security that you're, you're, you're going to look at in terms of that. And in terms of working out how to do that, one of the things which might be helpful is just to think about what changes in the cloud. So when we talk about this and we think about, when I'm thinking about you know, the teams globally doing those things, I'm really understanding what changes. And let's, be, let's give you a couple of practical examples, right? In the traditional environment, you might have been used to doing data center inspections. You might have been used to visiting a data center and saying, I'd like to see the data center. I'd like to perform penetration tests. Maybe some of that terminology is familiar to some of you. In the cloud, you have to move those testing regimes, all those processes, to the cloud. Because guess what? If you're provisioning for a day, a couple of hours, a week, maybe not a year, if you're going to visit a data center, then that becomes a much harder complex challenge. The other piece which changes is now you're moving into increasingly multi-tenant environment. So in terms of access to logs and things like that, for sure, you have to be clear about what your expectations are. And you have to understand how that practically operates in the cloud. Would we give other customers' data to you? No, of course not. So would you expect us to give your data to another customer? No. So when we talk about multi-tenant, we have to also think about what that means to logs, what that means to the whole processes of security. Now, the good news is uh, my team operationally have a load of experience of doing virtualization, have run outsourcing for a number of years, and guess what? I'm using all their processes and infrastructure and, and then applying those learnings and experience to the cloud. Practical example, 
The data centers I'm using for cloud are part of the existing data center infrastructure that IBM has. So I'm taking the physical controls, I'm taking the processes that are already in place and leveraging as much of that as I can. So if we look at the difference in cloud, I could spend you know, 20 minutes on this chart, so I, I shall move quickly. Just I think the things I'd pull out, it's rapid provisioning, it's multi-tenant, and it's, it's you know, different environments for, for governance that you have to apply. Okay, so in terms of that landscape, we've talked about some of the changes to cloud. Now let me talk about some of the questions that you might want to ask. So the question is, am I compliant? And you know, most of your organizations will say, well, how do we trust this? Am I compliant? So the question is, what do you need to be compliant to? And there is a paper outside that I co-authored, which is Cloud Security, Who Do You Trust? Which is, which is just about the kind of questions that you might want to raise with any cloud provider. It's not about, it, it is purely a, a, a thought leadership paper to talk about the questions, to start saying, well, what do you need to be compliant to? For example, if you're in healthcare, you might have to be compliant to FDA. Uh, if you're in financial services or in, even in the retail industry, you might have PCI. You might have a whole load of things that you need to be compliant about. So the first question is, what am I running and what do I need to have a compliant environment to? And then the question is, how do I actually enable that? So in the discussion with the cloud provider, it's really being clear about this is what I'm doing and this is what I need to do. What's identity in the cloud? Who should have access? How do you use privileged access? You know, some of these questions are really important. And when does you as a customer, what happens, where should you be able to get there? So what you're really looking for is to have, ensure that the processes of the cloud provider really address this piece. What's my sensitive data? One of the advantages that we've seen of cloud is that actually it starts to get people to think about the data and what they're running in the cloud to talk about the sensitivity, to understand what they need to encrypt, what they don't need to encrypt, all those kind of protection mechanisms, of which encryption is just a, a one. Um, so we have a number of questions. I talked about the application vulnerabilities, right? So one of the things, again, is depending on which cloud model you're moving to, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, all of this is about having the discussion about what you need to still do. Do you need to patch your application? Do you expect your provider to do that? What, how does that really work in practice? So all these questions, how do I manage devices? How do I understand intrusion prevention? There are a number of questions that come up in terms of having that dialogue with the cloud provider. And not all of these questions have to then be applied to which cloud. So I referred to software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service. Different cloud models. Fundamentally, the difference is really understanding who's doing what. What does the organization need to do? What does the cloud provider do? And be really clear about responsibilities. Sometimes you're putting these clouds into your data center. Sometimes you're having them on a public cloud, a private cloud. Fundamentally, it's understanding the model and, and getting the right questions out. And there are some real differences that one needs to look through in terms of the model and what you're doing. To make this easy, uh, my team uh, came up with this cloud security reference model, which is a way of actually describing in eight categories the areas that we would have the dialogue on. So, it covers everything from specific cloud governance through to uh, identity and access management, through to infrastructure, all the way through to physical data center security. The reason I've done this, the reason we've done this, is because there are a number of standards. We talk about ISO standards, we talk about SAS 70 standards, we talk about external uh, FDA standards. There are a number of standards which are out there. And what we, in terms of general peace, want to do is to make sure 
and, and I, I, I ask the teams to make sure we've captured the requirements and we've understood it in terms of how we actually deliver and, and do that security model. So this is both to explain in a regulated and a non-regulated environment how it actually works in practice. And I think the, the key thing for me is that one size doesn't really fit all. So when someone says, oh, it's cloud security, sure. The chart that we just saw, the reference model, we've, we've got because that can be applied to every situation. But how we apply it is clearly then thinking through those elements in the context of what we're actually doing. So when I talk about security by design, deployment, and consumption, we're really talking about it in the model that you're doing against the framework so that it can have a really clear dialogue of what's done. And that model also allows us to understand the whole of security in the context of what's going on in the landscape. Security is, is a part of the cloud service. It's not the only bit. You guys will be aware of that. So what, what I, I'd like to really just pull together here is the cloud security reference model sits within every service of cloud that we operate. And we build, for, so we build private clouds as well as run our own. And every time this reference model and the reference architecture which sits behind is the model that we use to help us navigate that conversation. And that sits in within the context of availability, the context of payment and billing, and a number of other processes that you would run in the cloud. So let me just spend one moment or a couple of moments on where is, where is it heading. So I've talked a little bit about the landscape for security. Some people call it cyber security. Some, it has a number of names. We've all recognized as well that cloud is, a, is an increasing piece of, of our landscape. And there are some trends which come out of that. Standardization of infrastructure is the one, is the first piece. So what we're doing as we're moving to cloud models is actually building standardized infrastructures. So what we're having to do on a security point of view is understand security by design, because guess what? If the infrastructure is consistent, then actually a vulnerability, we have to be clear that that could potentially be in multiple places if you're using standardized infrastructure. So our security has evolved to make sure we understand that. Interoperability. One of the things which comes up increasingly is, I've just talked about the cloud landscape, but as we do more clouds, clouds are gonna to have to work with each other, they're gonna to have to exchange data and talk to each other, and we're gonna to have to keep doing that securely. So we spend a lot of time looking about interoperability between different clouds, and thinking how that cloud environment is gonna work in practice. How does it work with your traditional data center? How does cloud fit into that? And where do you evolve to? The third piece I would describe is, is, is big data. So one of the advantages of cloud is you get an ability to do analytics and a whole set of things around big data, which uh, was just referred to as I was coming on. Fundamentally, again, from a security point of view, as we get data, my challenge remains that actually I'm interested in protecting the environment and managing the risk. And so when the cloud environment evolves and the big data evolves, I'm continuing to do that and ensuring that all those features I referred to in the cloud security reference model, who has access to the data, where are they accessing it from, how do I know what they're doing is maintained as we move into these environments. And the governance piece. As we move into more of the cloud environments and, the, uh, uh, and we get that, we're continuing to evolve our governance uh, methods and ensuring that actually that we evolve the, the controls and the checks in those cloud environments. What do I mean by that? The example I gave you a moment ago about visiting the data center is just one example of that. If those of you think that you are going to be able to continue to maintain the same governance models 
as you move to multi-tenant environments, you're going to have to adapt them like you're going to have to adapt the processes. Does it mean that we can't do security in the cloud? No. Does it mean we have to adapt our processes and build on what we already have? Absolutely. So in terms of governance, I touched on a little earlier that when I look at security, again, I'm building on the outsourcing processes, the managed services process that IBM already has and sophisticated, the risk management processes, the whole way we manage global environments. You know, this is not new for someone like IBM. So I'm taking advantage of that. And in terms of my governance, I'm actually applying the whole learning and experience and building on what we already have. The future is driven by lots of us accessing clouds from lots of different places on lots of different devices. So from a cloud security perspective, many of you may have looked at this in terms of things like virtualized machines and, and that environment. I'm looking at it from the end-to-end -end perspective. I'm looking at all the way from the device and how you access it, how your administrators access it, how your users access it, what policies they need to be aware of and signing up to, what their responsibility is, all the way through to the application, the infrastructure, and the data centers in that environment. So when I, I encourage you to look at it as cloud provision, think through with whoever you're having this discussion with. Make sure it is really the strategy that evolves with your organization. You will use some clouds today, you'll evolve, you'll use more of these devices, and you know, that's the context we're sitting in. So in summary, over the past years, uh, security concerns around cloud computing ha have, been, have been the most common inhibitor. Some of them are perceived and some of them are real discussions. So some of them, some people say, oh, it's the cloud. It must have some security issues. In reality, for all of you, I would suggest that and, and for me as well, it's getting it down to what do you really mean? Coming back to those questions, what do you need to be compliant to? How do you need to do the governance? How do you achieve that? In real terms in the business, and the business are the ones who are increasingly driving this, is it comes down to, I mean the conversation I, I often hear is, where's my data, who will have access, and how will I know? I mean that's, that's what it comes down to. In reality, each of the different cloud models that I've touched on has different features, and it's about applying security into the model. One size does not fit all, but it is about using something like a cloud security reference model, applying it to that cloud, having an understanding of what the cloud provider does, what you do, um, and really determining your desired security posture and enabling it away. Cloud is certainly evolving. We have other delivery models, clearly. Uh, you know, outsourcing managed services. You know, the advantage is, you know, you, you want to have a flexible delivery model and cloud is an increasing part of it. With that, I'd like to say thank you very much for your time. <laughs>